Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I have seven sight word activities for you today. These activities are sure to keep your child entertained and learning. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. The first activity is simple, flashcards. So let's get started. These are very simple to make. What I have done here is, instead of going and making those simple, boring flashcards, I have actually gone to the local local home improvement store and I picked up this paint sample cards. Now they come in different variety of color, shades, you know how it goes. But you can stick with the same color or you can pick variety of colors like I did here or you can just use normal paper or paper card and then simply punch a hole in them. The good thing about these are these are very sturdy whereas the paint sample cards they are sturdy too but they are they can only be written on one side. Whereas these you can write on both sides on the on the paper card. I used a one hole punch and I've also used a leaf ring. These are also called as flashcard rings. These are easily available on uh, Amazon and I'm going to put a link in the description so you guys can get an access to that. Just make sure that when you are uh, getting your uh, paper punched, the hole punch, just make sure that all your papers are lined up together so you're making a hole in the right place and together in the right spot so that way all your holes are um, lined up and evened out. So when I have my flashcards in front of me, my son is either sitting on my lap or he's sitting right in front of me where he can see the flashcards. All I'm doing is flipping through the flashcards and I say the words like want, white, and so on. And I do not expect him to know what the words are. I just want him to repeat with me as he's looking at the flashcard. This is the only expectation you want to have from your child when you're showing him flashcards. Then you're going to keep repeating those. Activity number two. Here we are playing a memory game. Very simple, very easy. Here I've used the same paint sample cards and I've used a scorer board or cutter board and cut them in two equal parts. So I have three cards here and therefore I have six cards after I cut them in halves. So that way I have two cards of the same color. Make sure you put the same words on the same color cards because you do not want to confuse them with the color when they are playing a game like memory game especially when they are so new to the words. After they are very well aware of what the word looks like and if you want to challenge them a little bit, then you can switch the colors like over on a green card and the same word over on a beige card or pink card and then see the fun. Make sure you introduce very fewer words and then you can go on to introducing four words or five words. So in this example, I have only used three words because he is used to can, but over and they are something new to him. Can you find can? What is that? They. Okay, them both back. Over. Over. Hmm. What is that? They. Okay. So when you're playing this game, you want to make sure that only two cards are flipped at one time. So here he flipped two cards, but he knew where the other card for they was. That's Therefore, he wanted to flip the third card. You don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that the first two cards that are open are closed. And then the next card is opened as a first card. And then you can match the cards. So people have played this game. It's a very simple game. But I'm giving an example to people who have probably not played this game before. The next one. This is the third activity and I've used a soft cardboard and I have cut it in half and left the flap intact. So this one is a little bit of rectangular in shape. It has six sides uh, intact and one side that's removable flap open. So it's kind of a box that you can uh, stick your hand. So then I went ahead and downloaded some pictures from the internet. I have downloaded most of these pictures on purpose like the piggy bank, the jack-o-lantern was not on purpose that was just uh, out of the blue a barn a rainbow and a building so those were purposeful pictures then i went ahead and colored them with crayons which was fast and then i just went ahead and made holes in the picture and it's also like a slot really not really a hole but a slot and also into the box excuse my shabby work here i had to use magic tape to put everything together so next um these pictures have a purpose so you see the piggy bank all you can do is introduce sight words that are numbers Pumpkin is random, barn is animals, and the rainbow is for colors, and they all come together and are 
stuck in one place so that way there is no mess at the end of the day so all your sight words are all together in one place and you're not getting lost so here we are doing the barn I have introduced only a few sight words so there is a cow a hen a duck and then I'm I get him to read it because he can read cow and hen but he did not know duck so I'm getting to read uh, those uh, words and then he introduces into barn here I have used the same uh, paint sample cards that you find and I have the number names and I have the color names I also have boy girl teacher so those are people names so here I'm introducing sight words that are number names into the piggy bank a little bit more creativity here would be to make circles out of these number names instead of rectangular um, shaped uh, cards because then you can it looks like you're introducing coins into the piggy bank if you notice my son kept looking into the box every time he entered uh, the card inside it because he was so intrigued by the fact that there were there was something coming out on the other side it's such a simple thing but uh, kids love this game so I hope you guys can use this the next is introducing color so here we have color red yellow and green that he's introducing into the rainbow you want to make sure that the name of the color does not match the color of the card they should be different so it's a little bit of a challenge for them similarly this is a building there's a slot here and I have people names like teacher boy and girl that i've introduced to him in this particular group of uh, sight words and he is saying the word and introducing that into the building finally i'm using the pumpkin and all the other cards that do not match into a single category i have introduced that and ask him to put it in the pumpkin because jack-o-lantern is his favorite thing so here we have what so new um you know those kind of likely little those kinds of sight words that he is introducing into the jack-o-lantern all right so activity number four so you've seen this activity on the internet several times so if you need a paper that has the sight words on them and the fishes please let me know i'll provide that sheet for you for free just comment below just make sure that you don't do the same mistakes i did because i didn't color them before and then i made a big mistake so i'm here to tell you what you shouldn't be doing so make sure you color them first and i have a sheet right behind here so you want to glue that sheet and put a clip in between the fish sheet and the sheet that's plain and you can have another fish sheet behind it if you want to it doesn't matter so just gauge and make sure that the clip is inside the fish glue it and then cut it but make sure first first thing is make sure you color your fishes so here i've gone ahead and colored all the fishes and i have another plain sheet of paper right behind which needs to be glued once that's glued i use a paper clip and put i put the paper clip between the fish and the plain sheet here is a half glued paper that I'm showing you just to make sure that you gauge exactly where the fish starts and ends so your paper clip is in between and inside the fish. I've cut the fishes and I've left a very small margin around it and I think it looks great. Here I've used two methods. One is taping the magnet to the ribbon. If your magnet is not very strong, this is what you want to do. Or else you can just tie a ribbon around the magnet which may not stick. And the other thing is the magnet may not stick to the actual clip because it actually decreases the power because of that small piece of ribbon that came in between. It still worked a little bit, but not as great as it would work for us when we taped it to the clip. Then all I'm doing here is asking him to pick the sight words that I'm calling out. So I've introduced very few sight words and I've repeated it. So here I have two fours, one with you, but are. And then I'm, I'm saying I want you to pick you and then he goes ahead and he picks the word you and if he does it wrong then I correct him I put the fish back in and this is a very fun activity to do activity number five for this I've used a wooden cube and just masked the tube with white sticker the purpose for this was so I could put on the side words on each side of the cube so total will be having six side words I have used this grid and I have randomly assigned side words all the six side words randomly alternating and uh, the frequency being three to four onto the side onto the sheet make sure you are just using the same six side words that are on the cube i'm using this cube now as a dice to roll so all he's going to do is first roll the dice and find the word that falls through here he's found she and then he's going to go ahead and pick a color and mark all the she's on the sheet initially your child might have difficulty like he had he couldn't find the word she so what i did is i took the dice and just went ahead and to each column and just scrolled around to see if he could match the actual words to the word that's being asked and he was able to do it later 
So then we do it for the other words like the, all, we, and finish up all the words. Our next activity is sight word bingo. The difference between this activity and the previous rolling the dice activity is that the rolling the dice is more for beginners, this is for advanced. There are several different sight words in this grid and they, or may, they may or may not repeat itself. So once you call out your sight word, your child has to pick all his words and finish up lines horizontally or vertically as quickly as he can to call out bingo. I've used these stickers to mark the words that have been called out. I've also used a stamp which I'm using a sketch pen to mark because I really didn't want to mess around with acrylic colors and it worked pretty well because all he had to do is stamp them. So these are two different options I'm giving you with stickers which are far more easy or stamping because kids love stamping all the time. So you can you do this to finish up your side words and once he does bingo I don't stop there I try to complete as many as words and horizontal vertical lines as possible. So this is our seventh uh, side word activity for the day and these are matching. This is very simple very easy you can do at home. So all you do is you write numbers and colors on one side and you write the names of the numbers and names of the colors on the other side. All your child has to do is match the name to the color and match the number to the name. So it might seem easy for us but for, the, for your child it is really difficult because this is the first time they are hearing the word five as in F-I-V-E and blue as in B-L-U-E as opposed to just the color blue or just the number five. So practice this every day because this is going to make a huge difference in their vocabulary, especially when they see the word blue, they're also associating color with the actual word. So I hope you guys enjoy these activities with your child. Please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking our channel. Thank you very much.